I'm Dr. William George, Superintendent of Schools. Welcome to Your Town, Your Schools. As another school year draws to a close, our teachers and students are as busy as ever. Students at Bayview Elementary learn to look at our American flag in a whole new way. Memorial Day is coming up, so we wanted to have a red, white, and blue day. That's been a tradition at Bayview for many years, and we decided to make it a bit more important and tell and get the kids involved a little more by having uh, Jerry come and show them flag etiquette, show them what the flags, what the flag means. Uh, we also do the Pledge of Allegiance every single day, and the teachers and I feel that it's important that the students know the reason why we say the Pledge of Allegiance every day. I feel that it's become a common, somewhat habit as we go through the whole school year, and it's nice to sit back and reflect on what those words truly mean. Well, it's essentially about the history of the American flag, the growth of our country, the history of our flag, and you know the many changes which was demonstrated today uh, that the flag went through up until Francis Hopkinson in 1776. Like, I don't feel like the children today realize how absolutely awesome it is to be an American, to understand our heritage, how important it is. I think it's great for them to learn about the respect of the flag, the etiquette of the flag. Um, it's just not something that I think is generally like known anymore. So I was very excited to have this assembly today. Well, it's our heritage. And if we lose our, the knowledge of our heritage, that's a serious loss to this country. So, and it's important to uh, the children understand patriotism. It's not a dirty word, by the way. And that they respect the flag, which represents our country. Well, as you can see today, it's usually very enthusiastic. They want to learn um, about the flag and they love the flag. And if you look around the walls and read some of the stories, you understand the feelings of our students. The students surprised me. They knew a lot about flag etiquette. They also knew who made the first flags and they also were able to participate and answer questions about the stars and stripes. A vexillologist, very simply, is someone that studies and collects flags. An associate of mine, Dr. Whitney Smith, coined the word in um, the early 1950s, and he took the Latin vexellum and combined it with the Greekology, and thus the word vexillology. In North America, there are about 200 of us who study flags to some degree. My collection is over 850 flags. I have every flag in the world and my other lectures to adult audiences. Uh, I do a program on the American flag goes to war, where we show all the flags of all the wars and all the flags of our adversaries. I do a program on state flags of the United States and we do all 50. And I do a program called Parade of Nations and I show 96 of the world's 196 countries. So I use a lot of different flags. Uh, they were very excited to have this assembly and it was definitely the hands-on activity of rolling up the flag. First, the students were stationed around the big 25-foot flag, and they all got to hold an end and sing uh, God Bless America. And then from there, the presenters were able to teach them how to roll up the flag appropriately. It was nice to see a large amount of students so interested in following directions and figuring out the right way to roll up a flag. Bayshore students got a unique perspective on 20th century historical events they are studying in class while speaking with Middletown senior citizens who were actively involved in our country's history. Senior citizen members from the local township community group are going to come in and talk to 8th grade students about uh, certain topics that they've learned so far this year, World War II, Vietnam, Civil Rights Movement. And they're going to give a different perspective than what you can just get from worksheets or a textbook or PowerPoint presentations or whatever you have. And it's really the essence is to make history come alive. To prepare for uh, today's assembly, the students worked on a blog website and they actually blogged the questions to the panel. And these are the questions that are going to drive today's assembly. And in addition, the panel had questions for the students to answer. What are you passionate about in your life? And what do you believe you owe to your country, community, or family? It's been a very interesting correspondence going back and forth for intergenerational 
uh, lesson. Well, I work at the Middletown Senior Center, so I thought what a fantastic idea it would be to have a living history discussion because our seniors have lived through World War II all the way through Vietnam, the 60s to present day, and they're the citizens who volunteer their time, stand up for what they believe in, and we're just a great example for today's kids. And I thought it would be fascinating for them to see the parallels. So I thought what a great resource we have right in our backyard for our seniors to come down and speak to them today. A lot of times when kids, even myself when I was younger, read history, it's hard to relate to it. It's just words in a book, but when you actually can interact with people who were there and talk with them, ask them questions. You get a better feel for history and, and the major events of what's, what's taking place. Well, I think it was a great opportunity for the students and for us seniors to kind of exchange information about perceptions. I think that uh, understanding history is made a lot easier if you can talk to somebody that was on the ground during that historical event. And uh, we may not have the school answer to all the issues, but we certainly were there and we certainly had a sensing of how the nation was responding. I would like to see this be an ongoing learning event for the kids, that they have these resources. They should be talking to their neighbors, their grandparents, you know, asking questions. There's so many stories that will be lost if they're not told. So I, I think it's a mutually beneficial experience for everyone. They're excited to share the stories that someone cares to listen and it was interesting to see the questions that the kids asked so they felt that there was obviously something that they could learn as well so I think it's really just come like full circle and I'm hoping it will be an ongoing experience. Students at Thorne Middle School took a hands-on approach to recycling while raising awareness of environmental issues within their school. Well, Lauren Rogers and I attended the research experience for teachers at Rutgers University last summer, and we were assigned a project with a team of researchers, so we worked with them. We were exposed to many green ideas that are going on all around us and it kind of it inspired us to bring it back to our school and figure a way to implement it with our students. In the math department, we're working on volume this year, so we use our skills in measuring volume to measure all the paper and the plastic and the garbage. And the science department, the composting is a part of their curriculum also, so it fit perfectly in. We kind of looked for things in our curriculum where we could implement these ideas and use the math and science ideas with a real world application. So I'm the math teacher and uh, Lauren Rogers is a science teacher, so we took different approaches for each of our classes. One of the things we did was Rutgers had an engineering day. We took 25 students up to Rutgers and they had some experience on here's a problem, solve it with no instruction. And they were able to bring that back to the classroom, which we really saw in the science class with composting. I gave them some basics that they had to have oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and we of course did all that in science class, the nitrogen cycle, the carbon cycle, the water cycle. So they had some good background information. They really could use one, two, or three two liter bottles and tape, and they had to figure out the ratio between uh, carbon and nitrogen and how much water to put in. We used a lot of math measurements, which worked well interdisciplinary with the math class because they did mass and volume and different things like that and they're measuring as we go. They're continuing their data sheets now. And then they made a scientific poster and they also made a recycling poster. Well, it's trying to encourage people to reduce, reuse, and recycle. We have a little mascot named Michael the man who likes to recycle and he has a little jingle. And it's all about being good to the environment. And these are some uh, misfortune events that happen with pollution. And here are three steps to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Well, in my class, we kind of broke it down into some groups were find out where the paper goes, some groups were find out where the plastic goes, some, some groups discussed with the administrators uh, strategies we can use in the classroom or in the cafeteria. So we had lots of different little things going on at once. 
whereas in the science class they had to design their own composter. I think definitely recycling paper, which is our main goal right now, is recycling paper because we do recycle bottles and cardboard, but we don't recycle paper. I actually thought it was a really pretty good way that we learned how to do recycling and stuff because it was fun and it taught us a lot. The students wrote scripts for infomercials and we forwarded those to the broadcasting classes. They also made their own videos to raise recycling awareness and so far each week the broadcasting class has shown those on the news each morning. Posters are being hung around the school. They made all their own slogans and came up with their own ideas. I thought it was really important that we spread the awareness so all of those things were necessary. I think the most important thing that I learned from doing this project is how we really need to do more to help this earth, uh, how we really need to reduce reuse and recycle. Well, lots of them are already talking to their families about making a composting pile in their um, yards. I think some of them had them and didn't really realize what they were. So I, I do believe it's mainstreaming into their homes already. So I, I think it's a great thing. I think it's a good idea because what just one classroom can learn if we spread it to the whole school, the whole school will be able to spread it to their parents and it will give us more of a recycling and environment awareness and it might help save them. Students at High School South recently got together to showcase their musical talents and to raise money for those in need in our community. Some students right now at Middletown High School South are experiencing uh, financial difficulty with these rough times that we're having that some people really have great needs and uh, we've given away most of the money that we've had to causes and we thought we really need to raise more money so the students uh, stepped up and said they'd be willing to do a concert for free they're donating their time and talent and the proceeds of, of this event are going to help our Mid Middletown South families. I think it's important to help people in Middletown to maintain a sense of community and to just overall help people out. I love helping people and helping the community and EHTC uh, stands for Eagles Helping the Community and that's what it's all about. In uh, 1999 we started this club and the purpose of this club was to help Middletown South community in a drug-free environment. So uh, since its inception we've uh, done so many projects and it's been so edifying to see here and be a part of this to watch the students and their parents, who are their first teachers, to step up and really give of their heart, soul, time, and energy to help others in need. EHTC, great organization, great school-based organization, and, um, you know, love getting out there and performing, so. I'm in a position where it's easy for people to call me and ask for help. As the nurse, I get a lot of these calls, and years ago there was no avenue for me to take and so Eagles Help in the Community has, in the past, sold boosters, uh, had other fundraisers, and supported Middletown Helps Its Own with food drives, and in general, just done a lot of different activities that help the less fortunate. I think it gives them a sense of community, of course, and it helps with their awareness that not everybody is as affluent as some. And what I think the students need to know is there are many among us in, in today's economy where uh, parents have lost jobs and people have fallen on hard times. And I think it's important for them to know that they can help, you know, and, and give that positive spin. And by having a, um, a band concert like this, the kids can have fun, raise money, and spend a Friday evening in a safe environment without drugs and alcohol. I want, hope that they realize that they can make an impact and enjoy themselves at the same time and understand what EHG stands for and that they can make a difference in anything that they can do. I hope our fellow students have fun while listening to music and also helping our community and giving back to people who don't have as much as they do. It's our hometown. You know, we all grew up here. Most of us grew up here. We all went to school here. We're all part of the same community. We should help each other when another one's in need. Students from schools throughout our district 
had an opportunity to show their parents how technology is being utilized in our classrooms. The Technology Expo is an opportunity for us to not only showcase the talents that we have in this district with our students and their work, but also to highlight some of the technology initiatives that we've been so fortunate to have in our budget with our vision of our Board of Ed and our administrative team to put forth into the classroom. So it's really how it's a two-fold purpose. Number one, to highlight the expertise and the talents of our children and also to showcase the technology that we're afforded here in Middletown. There's two phases to the Technology Expo. The first is the Expo Center where children are presenting what they have in their classroom and it's almost like an art show or a technology exposition where you can just walk in, you can browse, you can see the technologies that are available. We have some iPad demonstrations, we have some Prezi demonstrations, we have Skype, we have a how to manage apps on your iPhone, and then there are the classroom lessons which are in the whole first hallway of the high school and in our television production studio where parents can actually go in, sit down, and learn a particular skill or a program or an application with a technology class. All of the classes today in our Expo Center and our classrooms are taught by children. We are technology immigrants, our children are technology natives, and so we decided who better to teach us than our children with uh, the technology that they use on a daily basis. So we're really thrilled to have our students as teachers this evening, and I'm excited to just walk around and learn something new. This is a wonderful opportunity for students to demonstrate and showcase the many talents that they have in the use of technology. Beginning here in first grade, we have students using the iPads up to the high school level where they're editing uh, films and using it as research tools for their classroom studies. We're getting them ready for the post-secondary and uh, the global education today requires students to have technological skills. Well, this is a great opportunity for some of the students in Middletown Township to share some of their knowledge with some of the community members. So. A lot of them took a lot of trouble to figure out maybe what their parents or grandparents or neighbors would like to know as far as technology is concerned. So you'll see a variety, a myriad of things going on here from teaching people how to use their mobile phones to being able to use great applications that they find on the web and on the computers. So they have a great amount of knowledge and they're willing to share it with anybody that attends today. Because some of the parents, you know, were born in the 19-something, so they don't really know how to do technology stuff, so. I really liked it. It shows me how much technology has advanced. Like, I'm doing a PowerPoint and someone else did the Prezi, and the Prezi's like a faster PowerPoint. You can make stuff move, put photos behind the text and stuff, and it's really cool. If I need to do a project and I could use technology for it, I could show people in my class how to use it and help them with the project, because maybe it's easier to type than to write. Well, I liked it because it gave me like um, inspiration on how to do stuff. Like there was a boy over there doing iMovie. A girl over there gave me a paper how to do Skype. The fact that these kids can even do what they're doing, I don't know if too many people know about it. And when you have an event like this, it really opens the eyes. I mean, it opened my eyes tonight. I had no idea that these kids were doing this many things. This is my first tech expo. and. Uh, it opened my eyes. One guy over here has an iPad and he's explaining how he bought an application that for his, oh no, it was 99 cents. And for just 99 cents he has, in, he called it infinity notebooks. He said, would you rather carry 15 notebooks and 15 books or this one little iPad? And he handed it to me and I held it. I was like, this one right here. But uh, I guess if it can be affordable enough and uh, and technology is coming down in price, I would love to see it kind of take over in the classroom. Technology is changing so quickly that it's difficult to conceptualize it. Our children, as I said, are, are, are digital natives. They pick it up so quickly. And for us to stay abreast, for us to um, stay at the speed that they're moving at, I think it's really important for parents to see all of the capabilities out there, all the possibilities and why technology is such an important part of our educational system. What I love about this event is how much it shows that the students are learning about technology even beyond the walls of the school. We're, we're getting them to think about technology and giving them the basis for it and they're, they're just taking it to new levels and coming back to school and showing us the things they can do with it. 
And I think that's just fantastic. Parents and students at Fairview Elementary took part in a fun family math night, part of a month-long series of elementary school workshops. Family math is a night where parents and their children get together and they complete fun math activities. They express communication with their mathematical thinking. They just do lots of fun activities that involve problem solving skills and higher order thinking skills. Having a family math night gives our math specialists the opportunity to show our parents what their children are learning in school and what's expected of them with regard to mathematic instruction. All of the activities tonight are fun and parents and children will be working with household materials like macaroni, pretzels, coins, toothpicks. They'll be given the opportunities to explore and investigate to arrive at the answer and plus communicate. That communication between the parents and the children is invaluable. A parent can help their child with the simplest question just by asking why or how do you know and listening to their child explain their answer and to explain their thinking just helps the child further to build their understanding of the concept. I kind of just expected to be doing like math problems or like multiplication type things like flashcard type deals but this is a lot more interactive and I love it. Definitely going to be able to interact with him a little bit more because now I understand what he's doing and I can see it from first hand. A lot of parents learn math very, very differently than the way that we're teaching the students today. So this is just a nice basis for the parents to help them understand how their children are learning in school. I think it's pretty cool. You get to spend some time with your kid outside of your normal he gets to learn stuff home that we environment learn. and get to see how he's learning math. I think it's fun. What I personally got out of it is, I think it, it kind of makes you see, it, it maybe isn't as simple as it seems, and the thought that does have to go in to it. It's just not simple, two plus two is four, trying to look at the other ways that they're supposed to think. We've gotten very positive feedback. Lots of parents have said how much their children and themselves, they really enjoyed the night, and that they're really looking forward to many nights like this in the future. I think anytime parents are involved in the school building, school activities, their children really look to them in a positive light. And I really think that that building of communication and the building bridges between home and school are really accomplished in nights like tonight. Hopefully the parents leave here tonight feeling a little less stressed and overwhelmed by what we call new math, that they leave with a little better understanding that they can help their children when, they, when the child comes to them for, with a question. Hopefully parents will leave Family Math Night knowing that math is equally as valuable as reading. Just the way they model at home, they show their children that they themselves are reading books. We hope that they'll show their children that math is also something that is a part of our everyday lives and it's equally as valuable. Today we are celebrating Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation. The children raise over $2,000 in a nationwide competition where we finished fifth in the nation. Uh, and part of the incentive that I gave to the students was to, for the winning class, if they were the winning class, their teacher would be able to hit me in the face with a pie, with a lemon pie. So we are going to be presenting a check today to Alex's Lemonade Foundation and then we're going to make a video clip to submit to their foundation website and then we will have a pie in the face as a way to celebrate. Uh, this is actually the second time that we've uh, helped raise funds for Alex's Lemonade Stand. Our fifth grade last year did it and we found that it was such a huge success that we wanted to repeat it and make it on a larger scale. Uh, so thankfully we're able to do it in a very coordinated effort through our PTO, Mrs. Wenzel, our Vice President, and through the representative of Alex's Lemonade Stand who's a resident here in Middletown. So it, it's been a tremendous success this year so far.
I would like to congratulate all of our students for another year of academic excellence. On behalf of our Board of Education, administrators, faculty, and all staff, I would like to congratulate our graduates as they move on to the next level of their education. I hope you have a safe and enjoyable summer. I'm William George, thank you for watching.